Oh, hi, nice seeing you here. Today we're gonna to talk about how to structure your business in terms of your time and your team. The two T's, T, 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 T's. So your time and your team, if it's a new business, it probably will just be your time. If it's a business you started a little while ago, you might have a team of people, or maybe if you have some money, you might have some people right off the bat. We're going to talk about all that. You will make money from this. This especially applies to you if you just started a business or you're about to start a business. Now, certainly if you already have a business, it will also apply to you as well. If you don't have a business and you have no plans of ever starting a business, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Have fun collapsing with the Western world. But you will make money from this. I've made a lot of money from this. I've taught a lot of people this. They've been a lot of money from this. I talk a lot about this in my consulting when I do uh, corporate consulting. Those companies have made a lot of money from this. This will work. Uh, let's see here. Before we get started, I'm gonna I'm gonna just chill out for a few minutes here as people file in. As always, if you those of you live on the call, if you can both see me and hear me, put the number two in the chat. Not in the comments in the YouTube videos. I think that's really cute when I see the replay. And people are putting two in the comments. It's very nice. I need to do that on the replay. But you guys were live. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I see. Uh, good. I see twos. All right. Great. All right. I'm going to make sure that we're live on all of our platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on both YouTube channels. And we're on LinkedIn. And we are good. Okay. Great. All right. So, uh, as you can tell, yet again, I have changed locations again. I'm just going to move every two weeks. Is that okay? I'm just going to move every... That feels like what I've been doing the past three months of my life. I just move every two weeks. So, uh, no, this is not my apartment. Uh, you think my apartment would look this gay? No, this is not my apartment. So I was in a hotel for about a week here. And my plan was to go from the hotel for about a week right in my new apartment in Dubai. The problem is, and this is a quality problem for this country, everyone is moving here. So they have literally just the building that I'm moving into. They're having like tw uh, 15 move-ins a day. And there's a backlog. So I have to wait two weeks before I can move into my own apartment. Yay. Awesome. So I don't want to spend another two more weeks at that hotel. So I got an Airbnb that's a little more livable because I thought I'd just be there a few days. So I have a bunch of boxes up here. I'm kind of doing a repeat of what I did about three years ago when I first moved to Dubai. I was in a hotel room for a while or an Airbnb. I had a whole bunch of boxes. Over there, I've got a whole shitload of boxes. I pulled from the storage unit, things I'm going to need. And so around October 4th, 5th, I will move into my new apartment, get that all set up. Get a nice background for these videos. I'll do a walkthrough. I'm very excited. Two more fucking weeks. I've been homeless now for, feels like forever, but there we go. Um, let's see. What should we talk about before we get started as people more, yeah, more people are falling out of their way a little bit. Uh, what should we talk about? What's happened lately? Oh, I know something I could talk about we're getting we're started here. And again, if you're watching the YouTube video, you can fast forward a few minutes to get to the content here. Armenia. Bunch of you, as always, have emailed me and put comments. Like, Caleb, Armenia's at war. Ah, what if I get a residency and they call me and, and join their military, Caleb? Oh, no. This is uh, the disease many of you have called I read a scary article, or in many cases, I read a scary headline. So really quick about Armenia. Azerbaijan did not attack Armenia. Azerbaijan attacked itself. Okay? The, the Nagorno-Karabakh is that right? Nagorno-Karabakh, I'm saying that correctly, I think. Region is in Azerbaijan. It's not even on the border of Armenia. There are just racial Armenians living in Azerbaijan and they attack them. It has nothing to do with Armenia or very little to Armenia. Okay? And it's a flare-up, it's not an attack, and it's already over. They already surrendered. They just surrendered a few hours ago. As I said in my video I did about Armenia, there are going to be little flare-ups in Azerbaijan near Armenia, and sometimes on the border of Armenia, forever. And these are normal. That's why you don't live there, but you can certainly get residency there or get a passport there. But Caleb, if they have a war, they will not go to war. Iran will not allow it. Go watch the video. Iran and Russia will not let those two people go to war, those two countries. Azerbaijan, they won't let Azerbaijan do it, okay? But what if there's a problem and they, I get a passport, won't they call me to join their military? If you're over the age of 30, no. That's a 2% rule shit if not less than 2%. If you're under the age of 30, it's probably still 2%, maybe it's 5%. But if you're under the age of 30, are you going to get a passport? Are guys, in their, young guys with no money in their 20s going to take the time and effort and money to go get a passport in Armenia? No, okay? So no, you guys got to calm down. You guys got to stop being little rabbits and every little sound in the forest just terrifies you. 
Oh, I heard a thing about our media. I better ask Caleb. Oh, Caleb, it's fine. None of my plans have changed. We're still doing get residency there. I'm still going to get a passport there. I don't care. It's all right. Deep breaths. Relax. And next time you read a scary article, you might want to actually read the article. <laughs> you might want to read the whole thing and then make an assessment. And if you don't understand certain terms, look them up and you'll get the full picture. They didn't even attack Armenia. They, as Azerbaijan attacked themselves, which is what Azerbaijan does. Okay. All right. Very similar to, you know, when people, Caleb, I read a scary, when I moved to Dubai, Caleb, you moved to Dubai? I read an article that said, back in 2010, 13 years ago, a guy went to jail. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's see. What else we got here? Should we answer some good questions here? More donuts? Uh, tell me as a sports agent, what can I do to increase for profit productivity and profitability? I'm going to talk about productivity in this session. So you're great. What's the new $35,000 program I mentioned in my latest podcast. I mentioned a $35,000 pro. Oh, I did. Didn't I? Ooh. Uh, Hmm. Well, uh, I think I've, I not think I've changed my mind on that. Uh, can't talk about that. So don't worry about that yet. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I know what you're talking about. We'll address some of how you strategize those things here in this session today, but we do not have a $35,000 program. Do I have a filter on? I do not. This is my iPhone, unless the iPhone assigns one. This is my iPhone Pro Max 14. I have no filters on my iPhone unless the iPhone automatically filters me. Yes, I really look this sexy. I'm a, I'm, I'm a sexy beast. I'm young as fuck. I'm gorgeous. That's why I get all the girls because I have six-pack abs. Okay? I'm hot. I'm bringing sexy back. By the way, besides Antigua and Barbuda and Armenia, what other countries are you looking to get passports? I can't talk about that. You send loads of emails. Yes, I do. Is your email your biggest driver of revenue more than social channels? By far, yes. I've said, I just did a YouTube video on the importance of your mailing list. It's more important than, now, to me, in my business model, email is my driver, right? Now, if you talk to like John Somnes, he would say YouTube business driver. It depends on what your business is. Um, someone... Someone has 35K to spend. I must be on the wrong call. It's an audience like any other. We have audience members who have 35K to spend, 50K to spend, 20K to spend, 5K to spend, 0K to spend, 12K to spend, 1K to spend, 500 bucks to spend. Every audience, you know. When you have an audience, when you have an audience, they're going to have segments. You'll have segments of the audience, and you want to address all the segments. Some guys are very willing to spend that kind of money because they want that help. Yeah. Some guys like, I would never spend that. Great. Don't. Give them something else to buy, as long as it's helpful. Uh, should we get started here? Yeah, I think we should get started. All right. Uh, let me take a drink of agua. I can't wait to have my filtered water back to this bottled water bullshit. I've been drinking bottled water now for like three months. Tired of it. Can't. I can't wait to get settled. I'm so excited. It was gonna be. It was supposed to be now, but I, I'm patient. I will wait. I'll wait two more weeks. It's fine. All right. Um, I'm going to get started. If you have more questions, keep asking, and I will do a Q&A at the end. Matter of fact, I'm going to speed up the presentation to leave more time for Q&A because I don't have as much time for Q&As today as I normally do. So this is going to be a quicker presentation, I think. I'm going to try to make it a quicker presentation. <laughs> we'll see. So um, first off, now, normally I do slides for these training sessions. I was working on some slides a few days ago for this, and it just didn't work. I said, this is stupid. So instead of doing slides, I'm just going to bring up a Word document. I'm just going to type as I talk. It's just easier for the structure of what I'm going to talk about today. This is something I have not discussed with you in detail uh, publicly. I have some of my, some of my, you know, behind paywall stuff. I have discussed some of this. And I also discuss this in great detail when I do corporate consulting. So uh, obviously, you probably don't have a company that, you know, does 32 million a year. So I have to kind of, you know, scope this down for you guys. Uh, there's a few of you, there's a few of my audience, but most of you are not at that level. So this is specifically for you would have a small business, a new business, especially, especially a new business, or if you're planning on starting business very soon, 
or you've just started a business, this is for you, okay? How do you structure your time? How do you structure what I call the resources, the assets in your business, which would be your time and your team. Yes, money is an asset, but that's a separate topic. I'm gonna to talk about how you structure these, these time-based resources. Money is not a time-based resource. So hang on, I'm gonna share my screen here. This is beautiful Microsoft Word. So as I've talked about in my book, The Unchained Man, my primary book, and the new version is coming October 25th. As I talk about that book and some other my business stuff, when you have a business, it is really just three pieces at, at its core, okay? First you have marketing, wait a minute. I need to learn a spell. Do I need to zoom this up? This looks really small on the screen, doesn't it? Hang on, let me zoom this bastard. Get this bold. Marketing. Let's do the same more. Okay, marketing. That's better. Marketing. Okay. Subset of that would be sales. Just uh, 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 capitalizing. Okay. Then you have finance. Okay. There's a few subsets of that. Then you have operations. So marketing, finance, and operations, those are the three pieces of your business. You have to sell it, you have to deliver it, and take care of those issues, and you have to track money. That's it, that's a business. Make sense? So we have some sections out here. For example, under marketing, we have advertising. Under finance, we have like bookkeeping, banking, crap like that. Operations. Operations is a little more complicated. So operations, you've got a few things. First, you have what I call implementation. Did I spell that right? Implementation. So when you sell a thing, you have to either deliver it, you have to deliver it to the customer. So if you're a manufacturer, you have to build the thing and ship it to the customer, right? If you do services, you have to go do the service. You have to do it or your team, someone in your company has to go do it or some contract would have you, right? If you sell info products, you have to have a mechanism that gets it, gets the course or the ebook or the whatever thing to the end user in an automated fashion. You have to do implementation, right? So that's all part of implementation, right? Then you have admin. All your administrative support and you're you know like checking your email and shit like that that's an administrative function okay banking would be up in finance um let's see operations you also have what am i missing here implementation admin and um what am i missing i'm missing something uh i don't remember oh you know what no that's if it's more complicated so this is the breakdown of where you need to allocate your time in terms of yourself or in terms of your team. Now, if it's a small business and you just started and you started with zero money or very little money, who's doing all this stuff? You are. You're doing the marketing. If you're running ads, you're doing the ads. If you're on the phone selling, you're doing the sales. If you're DMing people on, on LinkedIn, you're doing that yourself, right? Who's doing the bookkeeping? Probably you. One of the first places you should outsource, by the way, is get a good bookkeeper as soon as you start making a little money. Who's doing the banking? You, right? Who's doing all the, you know, who's running the profit and loss reports, if any? You, you're doing all that stuff, right? Operations, who's implementing the product, the service, the information, who's doing it? You are, okay? Who's checking the email and following up? And, oh, customer service, that's what I was forgetting. That's also a part of implementation. It's a subset of implementation, okay? So people have a question about their product or they can't find it or, you know, you shipped them and they didn't get it. And they, okay, who does that function? You. Now, once you get a little larger, slightly larger, <clears throat> you're going to have people who do this for you. Okay. And over time, you're going to start outsourcing these functions to other people as you grow your business. Okay. So first, you need to figure out step. So the first phase of this is in terms of my given week, if you're looking at this a week to week, where do I spend my time in these areas? How much do I spend marketing? Or if I'm doing sales, doing sales. And what's the difference between marketing and sales? Marketing is creating leads. Sales is converting those leads in person. You are converting that lead into a, into a customer, okay? If you're strictly selling stuff at lower price points on the internet, you don't have a sales function. You're just doing all marketing. Make sense? So if you're selling 
which I wouldn't recommend this. If you sold vitamins on the internet, you don't have someone on the phone trying to sell them, hey, buy these vitamins, right? Right. You're doing marketing only. If you're selling higher end stuff that requires a phone call, generally that number is around $2,500 ish. So if you're selling something around, and that's, you know, that's not a hard and fast number, but around $2,500 on average, $2,500 or more USD, then you're probably going to need someone on the phone to close that deal. Maybe. There are exceptions. We have our get residency services where we close a lot of those without anyone calling. You can call us if you want, but you don't have to because people are already very aware of our services. They're very aware of the structure. It's something they already want. Makes sense. So sometimes marketing, sometimes it sales. So where are you spending your time? Where should you be spending your time? In terms of you're allocating your time in a given week. Sales, marketing, advertising, running ads, okay? Bookkeeping. How much time per week is that taking you? When you go in and you plug in all your shit into QuickBooks, which is what I recommend for your new business, okay? The bigger business, you do something else. Banking, how much time do you spend screwing around with your banks? Boy, have I screwed around a lot of banks lately in my company, but I'm a, I have a little co more complex set than most of you. So who's doing that? How much time do you spend doing that? When you're getting, when you're just started, this is going to be very low. Screwing around with PayPal or Stripe or your own bank, whatever merchant services you're using, okay? And then implementation. This is really important. How much time are you spending or how much time do you need to spend implementing the widget that you are selling to the customer and make sure the customer is happy, which means you're implementing it in a way that the customer likes, the customer expects, and you're following up in terms of customer service if they have questions or problems. Both are critical, critical. Matter of fact, and if Billy were here, she'd make this point. Sometimes these are short change. Implementation and customer service is short change because people focused up here on market. True, happens. Okay. So these are critical. How much time per week are you spending on these things? You need to map this out once a week, or if you do the E3D system for my books, once every three days, or once a week, whatever makes work works for you. I do once a week. And you map out where do I personally spend my time in these areas. Now it's important to know which of these areas make money, which of them don't. Does finance make money? Does it generate new money? No, especially if it's a new business. Now, if it's an existing mature business like I've got, then you can make an argument. Uh, I've talked about how I've hired a, I hired a CFO a few months ago, and, and he's already made me money, but I'm at a mature, more mature business. Okay? Newer businesses, it needs to get done, but it's not going to make you money. Okay? Implementation, does that make you money? Yes, it does. Because people will, people will tell other people, this, you, I bought this, it's amazing. So that does make you money. And, and more importantly, repeat sales. They talk a lot about, and I've talked a lot about my coaching programs about lifetime customer value. So if, so if a customer buys something from you and you have excellent implementation on it, there are, are they more or less likely to buy, from, buy something else from you in the future? They're more likely. And the easiest place to make money is from someone who has already paid you once. That's the easiest place to make money. Uh, in my courses, I talk about the product funnel. Not a funnel like a click funnels, not a sales funnel, a product funnel where you have multiple products. The one at the top is very cheap, but very good. And you sell that for cheap and a bunch of customers buy that and go, wow, this is awesome. I, I like this guy. I want more of this guy's stuff. And then they go down the funnel, they buy more expensive items and less people will buy the more expensive items. That's why it looks like a funnel. Easiest way to make money long term. So that's another reason implementation is so important. Okay. So you do make money with it. Admin. Does admin make money? No, not really, but it has to be done. When I check and respond to email, am I making money? No, I'm not. It has to be done to a degree, but I'm not making money. Okay. Customer service. Does that make you money? Same thing as implementation. Uh, it, if you Here's the thing about customer service. If you do it right, it doesn't lose you any money. If you do it wrong, you lose money. But you don't really make money on customer service, generally speaking. You could. You make an argument. That's more implementation stuff. So there, now we have an important basis on where you spend your time and what you outsource first. So for example, generally what I, rec I recommend people do in new companies, the first place you outsource, when you start a new business, start making some money now, the very first thing you the very first thing you outsource is your bookkeeping. Go get a bookkeeper. Have the bookkeeper take care of all the numbers in your QuickBooks. You shouldn't be doing your own bookkeeping. That's the stupidest thing on earth, okay? Unless you're brand new starting from zero and you have no money, then fine. For a while, I have to do it. Plus, it also behooves you to understand uh, basic bookkeeping terms. It does help. Um, I know a lot about bookkeeping because that's just, I'm a numbers guy. I'm not a numbers guy, but I'm good with numbers. 
what's the difference? I mean, there are numbers people and there are people who are good with numbers and there are people who are, who are, you know, aren't good with numbers or they are mediocre. I am a, I am very good with numbers. I'm not a numbers person, um, but I'm close. So the, the great thing about my CFO is him and I were immediately able to communicate because I knew all the weird terms and stuff with rare exception. Okay. All right. So you got to put a priority on these things. So the first priority should be on marketing and sales slash implementation. Both, both, they're both super critical. Yesterday, as I was sitting right at this desk, I had a meeting with Billy and Jeff in my company. We were on the phone for three hours on how do we make the 90 day business builder program even better? I said, if money was no object, Jeff and Billy, cause they, they run the program. If money was no object, what else could we do that we're not doing to make sure these people in this program are successful and make that money within 90 days? I'm like, we're pretty much doing everything, right? Because we just, we added a whole bunch of shit. And they're like, well, we could add this. And I'm like, really? Like, yeah, that would help. Okay. And we just, I said, well, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. There was something very big. I'm not going to talk about it today. I'll, maybe I'll talk about it next week that we added that program. Um, <laughs> and and I went, uh, we couldn't afford that. I mean, that at that, at that price, but we wouldn't be profitable. And Billy said, okay, yes, you could. I, we can do it for blank. She gave me a number and I went, are you sure? I said, yeah. I said, Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so that's all implementation. I want to make sure, especially if we're doing our coaching programs with you, our residency, where we're working with you directly, our residency programs, the 9 day business builder, the 500K accelerator, founder sanctum, where we're working with you directly, I want to make sure you get results. It's really important. Really important. Because I want you to go tell 14 people, holy shit, I joined Kill's program, I made all this money, or I did this or did that. Okay. And of course, my books and my courses and all that stuff too. Right. So that's critical. And I got to make sure. That we're constantly marketing, we're constantly selling. Okay. Now, if you have people who are on your team and you're working with them, same deal. Who do you have arrayed on these systems? And are they making you money in these systems? Now, making you money could mean they're taking it over so you don't have to do it, like with bookkeeping. So the more money, the more time you have to do sales, excuse me, if you're spending, I don't know, if you're spending six hours a week in your given work week, whatever hours you work, six and fuck around with your books. If you hired someone and paid them 20 bucks an hour or less, and now that's off your table, you'd have another six hours to do marketing and sales and get some more clients, right? That's good use of your money. And as your business grows, that'll happen to all these things. I have people in all these slots and I have a bunch of other slots that aren't on here, okay? And that's what you want. My goal, I don't think I've ever publicly said this in terms of how I want to spend my time. Um, I don't think I don't think I've talked about this. Maybe I have. Uh, hang on a second. Let me check technology. I'm always nervous that this is going to fuck up. Um, my goal in terms of where I spend my typical week in all my companies, this is a big goal. It's going to take me a while, but I'm, I'm getting there is to do nothing but I want to work about four days a week, take three days off a week, not yet, when I'm in my mid-50s. Um, oh, I'm 51 now, so I have not a lot of time left. Right? Uh, and all I want to do during my work hours, and I'll put in long days. I'll put it, If I work four days a week, I'll put in some longer days. I don't mind. That's fine. But all I want to do, here's all I want to do. I want to do nothing but meetings with department heads of these areas. How are we doing on this? How are we doing on that? Let me see your PL. Okay, everything looks good. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Okay. And creating content. That's it. That's all I want to do. I don't want to do any implementation. I don't want to do any coaching. I don't want to do any consulting. I do a lot of those things now, but eventually I can't do that because that limits my time for scaling the company. Okay. All I want to do is create content, either videos, books, courses, you know, and maybe I'll do seminars and things like that or things like this. Maybe. Okay. And that's it. I don't, want, I don't do any marketing. I don't want to do any sales. I want all that outsourced. And most of it is now. I don't want to do any of it. Why? Because that's what I do the best. Uh, if you guys follow Dan Sullivan, most of you don't. Uh, Dan Sullivan, he's the guy that wrote Who, uh, Who Not How. Okay, That guy was strategic coach. His whole thing is about the, everyone has a unique ability. You have a unique ability no one else has. My unique ability is I can create really high quality content. You can say one sentence on any area I know, and I know a few. And I could immediately talk for 25 minutes and it would be high content, high value off the top of my head. 
that's my unique superpower. So that's all I should be doing. I should be doing anything else. Some of you are really good at people and your superpower is maybe public speaking or sale or something like that. Some of you are really good numbers people. Some of you are really good writers. I'm a pretty good writer too. Okay, whatever that is, that's all you should be doing over time. Now, one more quick thing about this. And there's a lot more I could go into detail about this. This gets very complex. I'm keeping the surface level for you guys. There's a, there's a fourth area, okay, culture strategy. Okay, and that is you as the CEO or the business owner. Okay, you at the top managing the strategy of where the company is going. Okay, so that'd be things like scaling, improving, improvements, innovation. That's what it means new products or new services. So Peter Drucker talked about the only two things in a business that make money is marketing and innovation. Everything else is a cost. Nothing else in your business, he said, and he's right, actually makes money other than you marketing and you creating new products and services for your existing customer base or new customers. Because everything else is on autopilot at that point. Okay. So you have this too. So as you, as you scale and grow, you'll spend more time up here and less time down here. And that's good. It's a good thing. Make sense? Um, let, me let me show you one more thing about this, and I'm going to open up Q&A. I'm going to keep this very surface level in case those of you who are not numbers people. I'm going to give you the sample of a, of a profit and loss statement, right? Profit and loss. Profit and loss. No, profit and loss. Profit and loss statement. How does it, or an income statement. Some of you, if you're in the UK, might call it an income statement, okay? It's the same thing, right? This is how it looks. This is how profit and loss statement looks, okay? At the top, you have revenue. They call top line. This is top line sales, okay? Then you have cost of services or cost of goods or cost of services or cost of sales, I'm going to call it cost of sales. Did I say services? Cost of sales. So if I if you buy an ebook, let's keep it really simple. You buy one of my books online, the digital version, what's my cost of sale? Well, I got to pay a credit card charge. And that's about it. So if you get in the 90 day business builder, what's my cost of sale? That's quite a bit. I have to pay a salesperson. I have to pay commission to, depending on how if it was a cold sale, I have a, I have a marketing person I got to pay commission to. I have coaches. That implement a lot of the program. I do implement it myself. So I'm going to pay them. So my cost sale is pretty significant on bigger programs. And that's okay. As long as it's profitable, it's fine. Okay. So you have cost of sale as a direct cost. Then you have gross profit. Right. So that's, your, that's one of the most important numbers in your business. It's the, one of the biggest numbers I look at. It's probably the biggest number I look at is gross, not profit, gross profit. Profit is important too. But then you have, after gross profit, you have operating expenses. Operating expenses. I don't type very well when I know I'm being watched. Isn't that funny? That must be some beta male holdover when I was in high school. Because normally I just bang this out. It's so weird. So you have operating expenses, right? Your admin staff, your, your finance staff, your IT bullshit. You have all that stuff, right? That comes out out of your gross profit. And then above you have net profit. And after that, you have taxes. There's a lot for you guys living in the collapsing Western world. I don't have that problem anymore. Okay, I have taxes, but it's beep. All right, so these things also are indicators of where you spend your time. Okay, so cost of goods is things like transaction fees, which is your banking, sales commissions, advertising, ads, I'll just say ads, okay, ads. That's part of your cost of sale. You need to be aware of this. You need to do these things. Make sure they're implemented correctly, implemented effectively, and implemented profitably. You gotta spend time there, right? Okay. Then it's like revenue, you've got what? You'd have branding, organic sales, okay, marketing. There's another part you need to, uh, I'm going off the screen now. Sense? So that's another area. Uh, gross profit is a number, is, an ex is a, just a number. So uh, operating expenses, that would be your IT, your admin team, your finance team. It's the same thing all over again, just the structure a little differently is how I look at this, okay? And various other things. 
So these all take time and effort, right? Net profit, uh, that gets complicated. So I'm not gonna talk about that. That's off the scope of this, okay? Where are you spending your time? Where do you need to spend your time based on what makes money for you now? Where do you need to start outsourcing quickly? Where do you need to outsource later? And then when you outsource it, lastly, and here's a mistake that I made, you need to pay attention to all these groups of people. So I think I mentioned this before. One of the problems I have this year that I've taken care of now is that I would have a team of people doing a particular task for the company, either in cost of sales or operating expenses. And I would say, okay, guys, go do this. You guys are smart. You know how to do it. Go do this. They say, okay. I say, okay, bye. I, I'm busy. I'm running the company. I'm not, okay. And I would never check back in on them. And then two months later, I'd be like, what the fuck? What's this? Why is this not working? How come we're not making money here? Why do we have these problems? Oh, shit, that didn't get done. Why didn't that get, oh, shit, I didn't get this done. I should have gotten that done. Why didn't I get this done? A lot of it was my fault. So now I have meetings with department heads twice a week. It was once a week. I've created it to twice with certain departments. I am having meetings. Matter of fact, when I talk to my coaches, because I do what I sell, I sell coaching. I, I buy coaching. I believe in what I sell because I do it myself. My, I was talking to my coaches like, you know, I have a lot of fucking meetings. I'm like, yeah, as you, as you move from business owner to CFO, you have more meetings. The way it works. Elon Musk spends all day in meetings. He's a CF, CF, CEO. So when you're CEO, yeah, that's what happens. I said, well, I'm thinking about adding like another day of meetings. I mean, I hate meetings, but like, I think I need that. And they're like, yeah. I said, based on business in terms of the size of the company I have, and they have all my numbers and all my statistics. Does that make sense to do that? And I was like, yeah, we got a big enough company. We need this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so that too. So you have to pay attention to what these people are doing. When you get started, this is an old Robert Allen thing. You need daily accountability. When you get start, when you hire someone brand new and you're getting new, daily accountability. I want daily numbers or daily activity or daily reporting, or I'm going to check in on you every day. And that's, that's that gets difficult when you have a location-dependent business. And people, you have people all over the world. They're not in front of you in the same office. Very careful. You have to be, stay on these people. You don't micromanage these people unless that's your personality, but that's not what I teach over my other channel. You just need daily accountability. What are your objectives? Are you hitting your objectives? That's it. That's all you care about. Okay. Okay. Um, hang on. All right. Really fast. Let's talk about Founder Sanctum and I'll get to your Q&A right now. I'm going to make this really quick and simple. Quick and dirty. Where's my little icon down here? Let's see. Hang on. Hang on. Please hold. Founder Sanctum, really quick. We have reopened this program. It is only open until Friday night. You get eight coaching sessions a month. I'll just summarize this really quick and I'll tell you everything you get. Eight, eight group coaching sessions with me or one of our other coaches who are all making at least $85,000 a year location dependent. Some of them make a hell of a lot more than 85000 a year. Okay, most of them do. Okay, and it's Q&A. You sit there and ask us any questions you want about business, finance, structuring, any of that stuff. It is the business version of what we had of, of SMIC. It's an on and it's it's two ninety seven a month. I'm just going to tell you the price right now. It's two ninety seven a month. That's it. Under three hundred bucks, eight Q and A sessions with a high income location dependent business owner coach. Eight. You get two a week, plus a bunch of other stuff. There you go. It sells itself. If you have the ability to do this, if you have a business, you need help. This is the fastest, easy, easiest way to get customized coaching. Customized because it's all QA based. You ask us questions and we tell you. That's Founder Sanctum. It's open right now. So you get eight QA calls, two per week. You also get a monthly accountability meeting with Jeff. And so that's where you set objectives for the next 30 days and you, and you, you become accountable to Jeff. He's awesome at this. That's in addition to the eight meetings. You get nine a month. Okay. I also do for Founder Sanctum this year. Can you guys read this? Let me zoom in up on this. Yeah, I'm going to zoom that up. I do a customized video training where I do a video on something that you guys request, a video, a business topic, only for Founder Sanctum. There's a thread we have in Basecamp. You'll be part of our Basecamp. And you say, I want to Caleb, do a video on this. And it can be as micro as you want, and I'll do it. One a month. Okay. You're also in our base camp. She so track all that stuff. She has questions. You're on the message boards, all that stuff. Now, also, we're throwing this stuff for free. 
my how to get clients course. It's a video course. One of my most popular courses. You get it for free as soon as you sign up. It's yours. It's free. We just throw it in there because I want you getting clients and customers. Okay. Copywriting checklist. This took me $10,000 of my own money. That's probably a low number in terms of research where it's literally a checklist in Excel and it tells you exactly how to write your copy for your emails, your sales pages, your squeeze page, your website, whatever. It says, do you, I'm not going to say what those things are. You just, you get it as part of this program. It's yours. We just give it away. Founder Sanctum. Massive income flow chart. This is a flow chart that I built several years ago. It's exactly how I got to six figures. Actually more than that. Still in my twenties and thirties. And I flow chart everything I did in terms of when I sell a product, I did this and this to sell more products. Then I did this, this to sell more products. And this is a flow. I flow chart everything I sold in terms of service-based business. I give that to you for free. It's You can only get these part of our courses. Okay. We're just giving these away for free. Um, talk about base camp already. Colby A. Oh, right. We're doing the Colby A. So you get two tests. These are $50. If you get them by yourself, we throw them in for free, 50 bucks. Um, you have to be a member. No, no, we just throw these in. 50 bucks. If you do this yourself, it's free. Colby is your work personality style. I am in, I am, let's see if I remember my Colby. I'm a 6733. Is that right? No, no, no. I'm a 763. I forgot. Damn it. I have to look this up. I'm a fact finder something. I forgot what my Colby is. Oh my God. I don't remember. Anyway, you get your Colby. It's awesome. It shows you how you work, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are in terms of your work. Then you get the corporate version of the Myers Briggs. The actual, not the free bullshit one on the internet. You get the corporate version people buy. I'm an INTJ. You get that. We just throw it in there. Okay. Um, you get 50% off the Unchained Man Society, which is my Alpha 2.0 version of this. You get half off that if you're in Founder Sanctum, so you can sign up for both. You can sign up for Founder Sanctum and the UMS. Un Unchained Man Society is what we used to have for SMIC. It's a new version. You get 50% off that because this is an ongoing program if you want, okay? $1,000 off the Business Builder, $2,000 off the 500K Accelerator after two months of membership for both these, Okay. Uh, what's the link? The link is Sovereign CEO. I'll put it on the screen here. I don't have a slide say, so I'm like, you know, I'm slumming it. Yeah. Make this big. Ooh, it's big. That's it. SovereignCEO.io slash FS. You have... <coughs> Whoa! Bless me, Lord. Hang on a second. Open now. We're closing this Friday night. Because, should I say this? I can't say this. Sorry, I can't say why. Okay. We're closing it Friday night. Can't tell you why. Sorry. Tell you later. So you went in on this. This is the cheapest way to get coaching from people who are actually making money, including myself, in location-independent businesses. If you have all these questions like, what about this? What about that? I'm trying to do this. Is this a good niche? And what? how do I do that? And This is it. 300 bucks. It's 297 a month. And this is a business program. It's tax deductible. Can write this off of your taxes. Okay. It's a monthly program and you can quit whatever you want. And we have guys who sign up for a few months, then leave and come back. I don't care. That's fine. Show me another program on the internet that's $297 where you get nine coaching sessions a month. Now, these are group sessions, but these are not one on one. These are groups. And just that we got, you can ask us whatever you want. Business, please. Dating stuff is the UMS program. That's another program. I mean, it's like a no-brainer, right? Okay, let's do questions and answers. Uh, I'm going to put on my glasses because Big Daddy Caleb is getting old. I can zoom this up. Let me see if I, oh, I'll just wear my glasses. Who cares? You guys have a lot of questions. Holy shit. Uh, all right, let's do it. Hang on. Do, 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 do. Let me write what this is. Founder. Sank, dumb, fires, oh, closes, Friday night. Right. Hang on. All right. Where are we here for a question? Where would we go? Where would we go? Let's see. What do you think of having a business in a language that is only spoken in the collapsing West, e.g. German? I feel like all intelligent Germans will for themselves in English already. 
That's fine. That, that can be a valid niche. That's fine. Because it's not the country of Germany. It's people who speak German. A lot of people in Dubai here are from Germany because you know why. So and get the fuck out of Germany, my God. When can we ask you specifically to do a training in FS one on one building a back end and another optimization phase? I don't understand the question. If that's a request, if you're in Fender Sanctum now and you're doing a request for a video, you just put it in the in the, in the message board. I understand your question. I heard the UAE. I talked about this ten thousand times. I'm happy to talk about this again. Introduced the nine percent corporate tax. That's correct. But the free zones are exempt. That's correct. Is your business in a free zone, or how'd you get around this? What do you think the answer is? You think I would set up a corporation in Dubai not in a free zone, knowing that tax was coming? What would you guess? <laughs> You've done affiliate programs with other guys. Do they approach you or do you approach them? And what checks do you put to ensure you're not putting a potential scammer in front of your audience? So what I used to do is I would I would vet these people myself. And so now I have someone in my company. I have a JV person. And that's all she does is her. she has her own business. And all she does is JVs. So she vets these guys. She has a whole system where she vets them. These are people who have been selling stuff for a long time. And they have good, you know, they have low return uh uh, refund rates and they honor their refunds and all that stuff. If someone is brand new, um, I'm very, very leery. Usually nine times out of 10, 95 times a hundred, someone is brand new. I'm saying, sorry, no, unless I know you really well, like you've been in a lot of our programs. So like, here's an example of someone who is new, who I said yes to the Dean, his uh, DeFi course. He was new, but I know the Dean very well. So I know he's a real guy. He's a straight shooter and I've known him forever. And so I was able to make an exception on him. So I have somebody who does that for me now. Again, I outsourced all this stuff, just like I talked about just now. I outsourced this all. Let's see if I can get my glasses off. They're irritating. After years of traveling, I found that I need to focus on a social life and of a location and not just financial aspects. Would you rate Dubai in terms of making friends and dating? I've said this many times. Dubai is not a great place for dating unless you're doing sugar daddy stuff. If you don't want to do sugar daddy, there are better, many better places in the world to date than Dubai. Making friends. Uh, making friends is actually pretty good in Dubai because you have so many people coming here. Many of them are single or have no friends and they're looking for friends. So lots of opportunities to make friends. Pink Firefly made friends here really fast. I was shocked and she's kind of shy and she did it. Now I don't give a fuck cause I'm an introvert, but making friends pretty good place. Dubai dating. No. Could you date in Dubai? Yes, I could. If I was single, you can. I'm just saying if that's your objective, there are many better places in the world to date. Pretty much all South America and Southeast Asia, if that's your priority, than Dubai. Sup, Caleb? Good to see you, bro. You see me really focusing on your business building and five flags side of your business. Is that making you significantly more than the non-monogamy getting pussy business? That's always been the case for since 2018. That's nothing new. Sovereign CEO makes 11x what Alpha Male 2.0 does in terms of dating advice. However, Alpha Male 2.0 is a conduit to Sovereign CEO. So I've not abandoned Alpha Male 2.0. I have some very big things planned for Alpha Male 2.0 literally next week. You're going to see it. So I still do Alpha Male 2.0. We have a whole comic book and stuff. I mean, we have all kinds of shit because people who sign for Alpha Male 2.0, a lot of them go right to Sovereign CEO and go, this is great. Because Sovereign CEO is actually a subset of Alpha Male 2.0. Alpha Male 2.0 is the umbrella under Sovereign CEO is below Alpha 2.0. But in terms of the Alpha 2.0 stuff we sell, the dating stuff, yes. Sovereign CEO far outsells in terms of profitability. Yes, correct. Marxists argue it's unethical to sell products for profit. That's correct. That's why they're insane. Yes, correct. Why is this not a, why is this not a good argument and why is it ethical to sell? Because now I'm motivated to make sure that it's the best. If I give it away for free, I'm not motivated. I need to be incentivized to give you the best product. If I have no incentive, why would I do it? Why would I just give shit away for free when I can when I don't give a shit if someone buys it or not? We just had a three-hour meeting about 90 Day Business Builder. You think I would have taken three hours out of my day to do that if 90 Day Business Builder wasn't making me any money at all, ever, and we're doing it for free? No. There you go. Marxists are insane. I have to admit that the building optimization and scaling phases within the maintenance mode are absolutely genius. Cool. Thank you. Could an FS session or two, could an uh, FS session or two on optimization 
phase as well as PDF checklist or guide. That's not how FS works. FS is more of a free-flowing, you ask us questions. So if you said to me in an FS session, Founder Sanctum, could you kill, could you take the next 10 minutes and go through the three phases or the scaling phase, the optimization, and I would do it for you. That's how it works. And you know, these these programs evolve over time. If we get a whole bunch of people in Founder Sanctum saying, please give us a session on this. We don't want QA, we want a session, I'll do it. As long as you're a paying customer, sure, that's fine. Isn't every business function an operation? No, it's not an operational expense. Operating expenses is a financial term. That means your expenses that are fixed, that are non-variable, that happen like your rent for your office. If you have an office, you wouldn't enough to open a business. Or your, you know, your, your personal assistant, your, you know, your admin staff. They're there all the time. It's the same expense. That is called an operating expense that is not part of cost of sale. Cost of sale will be your salespeople, um, your manufacturing people, you're manufacturing a product, you know, your banking charges, crap like that. I understand your question, but that's not the financial term. Any tips for running a business? You have kids. Uh, yeah, I built my business when I had two kids. Yes. I only really have time late at night to work or should I forgo sleep and they'll build the business up. Well, that depends on if you have a full-time job and little kids, then yes, it's complicated. It's harder. You just got to sit down and plan out your week and stick to your plan. If you have a full-time job and you have little kids and you're starting a business, it's hard work. And you're not going to get a hell of a lot of sleep. You're not going to get a lot of exercise done. Yeah, that's the way it goes, right? Yeah, yeah. Do your best so you can cut back on work so you can work during your lunch hour. By the way, I did all this stuff. Although, wait a minute, no. Um, I started my business around the time I got married and had kids. So I had kids, but I had a full-time business. So I've never been in a scenario personally where I had a business and a full-time job and kids. Thank God. But if that's staring you're in, you get to work. You know, it's like you know, these kids, what few there are in this generation, these hardworking young kids, what few there are in the hardware, when they have, they go to college full-time, then they got a full-time job at night, and they just suck it up and do it, right? We gotta do. Is Excel a good choice for your accounting software? Or do you have another recommendation? Not Excel, QuickBooks. Selling to Italians is also an option, but I have the same feelings. Yeah, it's fine. I don't know. I would focus on Germans more than Italians if you want a niche. Germans are hardworking people. They're insane. They're suicidal. They've destroyed their society. But at least they're smart enough to admit to admit it, unlike Americans. Americans go, what's wrong? America's great. Germans like, yeah, we fucked this up. Whereas Italians, they have a new government every week, and it's a whole different culture. They're just amazing people, but I don't know if I'd use them as a niche. Let's see. Um, do you or Billy use Wise, a payment processor, or a merchant all? Billy uses Wise. I do not. Billy uses 10,000 things because she's working a lot more people than I do. Uh, I do not. I do not use Wise, but I have no problem with it. How did you find your CFO? Rule of three, I interviewed a whole bunch of people through referrals from people I knew. Hey, do you know a good CFO? And I interviewed three people, three or four? Uh, four, excuse me, I interviewed four people. And I did the rule of three. I assume the first person I hired would suck ass. And he didn't suck ass. He's fucking amazing. I got lucky. Sometimes you get lucky on the first one. I got lucky with Billy too. I expected to hire Billy, then fire Billy, then hire someone to hire. And then Billy, so sometimes you get lucky. Usually you're not, but that's what I did. You mentioned healthcare before as an area for niches, and of course, AI is on everyone's lips, but are there any other potential areas that you think could provide profitable niche opportunities? Far too general a question. Caleb, what are some good niches? There's a million of them. I don't know. How many man hours or dollars are you spending in all of your businesses on outs? On, on outsourced contractors, BPO, similar to Brickwork India. I don't understand the question. If I'm spending time, why would I be spending something I would outsource? I understand your question. On outsourced contractors. I don't spend time on outsourced contractors. They do the time. You mean managing them? I don't understand your question. What are good business for listings? <laughs> All the businesses I say you should start. So here's the fastest way to make money if you're a listing. Fastest way to make money, okay? If you're in anything, all right? Fastest way to make money if you want to start a new business. You sell coaching, consulting, 
or some kind of service. Because that way, no matter what you do, it's high margin. You only need a few customers, you're making thousands of dollars. That's what we push the business builder program. Yes, you can do an online course or an ebook, but that will take you six months to write the book. I said, get zero money fast. Coaching, if you have more balls, consulting. Consulting requires more balls. Okay, if you've got less balls, coaching, anyone can be a coach. If you're niched and you're hyper niched, hyper niched, coaching, consulting, or uh, some kind of service, personal service or business service. If Billy were sitting here, she'd say go to B2B. B2B. Business is better, which is which it is. You don't have to. That's it. Are LTV and backend synonymous or any distinct differences? Well, they are not synonymous, but they are very similar. Backend is LT backend is what percentage of sales are you selling on the back end after you made the initial sale? LTV includes the initial sale. So they're not synonymous, but they're close. So back end is you buy my you buy you you've never seen me before in your life. You buy one of my books. So you give me, you know, 50 bucks or 20 bucks, whatever it is. All right. Then you buy one of my coaching services. That was a back-end sale. My book was not a back-end sale. That wouldn't count. But your LTV is the combination of those two things. That's the difference. Good question. Why do you keep working if you already have enough money to live on for the rest of your life invested? I never said that. I'll tell you what I said in a second. What motivates you about scaling your companies and creating content so much? All right. What I have said is I have enough money to stop working right now. However... I would not be able to maintain my current lifestyle. My lifestyle would take a big hit if I stopped working. Okay. So that's issue number one. Issue number two is my net worth, in my view, is low based on where I think it should be, based on a man of my age and my income and my background and my successes historically. I should have a higher net worth than what I think it is. Now, if I told you what it is, you'd probably say, that's great. I'm talking about what I think it should be. So I think my net worth is very low and I could stop working. But my lifestyle would take a hit. I don't want to take a hit. I would take a little hit, but not a big hit. So there you go. That's why. And thirdly, I will never retire. Retirement is fucking stupid. I love to work. I just said what I want to do. I'll work three to four days a week creating content, having and every once I have a few meetings. That's fine. I'll do that the rest of my life. I'll do that into my 90s. That's exciting. That's all. I like doing that stuff. I like to work. As long as it's work that I like. That's, that's the big reason. Innovation can come from feedback from customer support too, correct? That is correct. That is absolutely correct. You're absolutely right about that. Right. Question. Do you take questions today? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, what are some of the best ways to have additional income streams from non-Western countries? Too general a question. Meetings. How do you keep them short and efficient with different personalities? So you have a very specific agenda structure. So in our meetings, we talk about, see if I can remember our structure. I usually, I write it down. We talk about wins. Then we talk about uh, items, which means do you have any tasks for the people? Then we talk about where we are in terms of our objectives. And we talk about problems. Sometimes you talk about customer team headlines, depending on the meeting. And then you say, okay, we're done. And here's the thing. If you run the meeting, you need to be an asshole. You have to say, okay, guys, that's great. What else? I'm really good at this. I did that a lot in the, meeting, in the three hour meeting yesterday. Well, that, that, well, it was still three hours because it had to be. All right, what else? Because people like to talk, right? That's great, Joe. Okay, now what else? What else? What? I'm used to saying this to my wife, too. My wife is a talker. Great, what else? We're moving along here. Let's go. Have some balls. Why does Founder Sanctum only open at a specific time while Unchained Man Society is open at all times? Because different products are marketed differently in my company. And do both programs give you access to SMIC material? No. Founder Sanctum has nothing to do with dating or alpha male tube, but no, nothing. It's all business. UMS, which is the new version of the SMIC, gives you all the SMIC material. And you can join both. Founder Sanctum gives you a 50% discount. When you go to sign up for Founder Sanctum, go to the page and you'll see it. There's a button there, to, an option to say, sign up for Founder Sanctum and UMS at 50% discount. You do both. Founder Sanctum is business only. It is a sovereign seal product only, not Alpha Male 2.0. UMS is Alpha Male 2.0, different thing. Okay. That's why you can't write off UMS because we talk about dating and stuff. And, you know, testosterone and anti-aging. UMS is a program for men. Founder Sanctum is a program for anybody. If you're a woman, you can join Founder Sanctum. 
We have more and more women joining our business programs. It's great because they do really, generally speaking, they do really well. There's an extra like pressure for women to succeed these in these arenas. They they think they kick ass. It's great. Question: Difference to ninety business builder and your other yearly coaching program. Uh, that other program is currently closed, and I don't want to muddy the waters here. What are some kick-ass rock anthems from 1980s movies? We're not gonna take it. That was an easy one. You want some funny ones like the Karate Kid one? Like, what's the Karate Kid? My brother always plays that fucking song. Um, oh, what is it? Let me think of it. Hang on, it'll come to me. The really corny, like motivational, like Rocky. Like, I have the tiger. That's not, I have the tiger. It's great. I have the tiger. It's the thrill of the night. What is the one? You're the best. Okay, you're the best around <laughs> nothing's gonna ever bring you down you gotta go on youtube later and bring up you're the best around just type in your best around karate kid and play that that corny ass 80s song and i love the 80s i'm a creature of the 80s i worship the 80s but even then i can admit okay that's a little yeah but it's hilarious you're the best around hi kill phone said do i corporation and i have multiple businesses in different industries great do I have to incorporate each or can I run all my single business under one corporation? That is an accounting bookkeeping question that I cannot answer. I would say yes, because I do that. There's nothing illegal about doing that. It's more of a, you got to ask your bookkeeper or your accountant, would this screw me up majorly if I had six companies out of this one entity? Because you can set what's called classes in, in QuickBooks. So Alpha Mail 2.0 and Sovereign C are running the same company, the same entity, I should say. DCS International. Okay, so they run, but we have them in separate classes. So we have a profit and loss statement for both. You can do that. And there's nothing illegal about it. It's fine. But it might be company if you have lots of them. The deadline is rapidly approaching on Get Residency in Dubai and doing our Dubai Super Conference in November, which is a lot cheaper. It's only 300 bucks. So sovereignco.io slash Dubai GR. Let's see here. What were all the significant reasons for not choosing Buenos Aires as a primary flag? Too much chaos. It's just too crazy. I couldn't live there. I need I need some structure. Dubai is very structured. Even Paraguay is less chaos than Argentina. I just couldn't do it. Great place. And you know, now look what happened to their currency. They're just, they're maniacs down there. And they kind of like it. They're wonderful people. They're great. I just couldn't live there. Great place to go. Buenos Aires is one of the coolest cities on earth. I mean that. It's one of the coolest cities in the world. It's, go hang out there for a week, man. You'll have a great time. It's awesome. But I wouldn't live there. For me. I can sometimes get too into black pill stuff now and again. Okay, don't do that. What would you recommend to get <clears throat> out of this line of thinking? Stop watching that crap. It's 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 factually, empirically false. Just stop watching it. Watch something else. I mentioned this. You know what you should listen to? Instead of going on YouTube watching black pill bullshit, watch my YouTube videos. Always watch those. Then listen to the Lord of the Rings audiobook spoken by Andy Circus. I'm doing that now as I, you know, do random tasks around the apartment and shit. Oh, it just, it makes your heart sing. Like, this is when Western civilization was great. What's your take on systematic coaching where you coach the person and not the problem and you're not the expert of the issue? You coach the process and ask questions to help them find their own answer. So I do that a little bit in my consulting. I have never done it that way with coaching. That border that borders like therapy to me, just to me. So I don't, that's just not the way I do it. Certainly that's a factor. Certainly I will have business coaching clients that have psychological fucked up problems from their childhood. And I will do what we can. We do what we can. But if it's serious, and I've been in the scenario with Alpha Male 2.0 and Sovereign CEO and some consulting, where I'm like, you know what? You've got to see a therapist. I can't, I can't, I'm not a therapist. I can't help you this stuff. I can tell you this. You, this deep shit, you need to talk to somebody. You got some shit going on. You got some, you got some issues, dude. And and sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. I um remember this, this popped in my head. Years ago, and I did a lot more one-on-one -on -one coaching for Alpha Male 2.0 guy was talking about his girlfriend and they would get the physical altercations. They would fight, like punch each other and hit. And I would say, all right, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
who, I'm not mentioning his name, who, I said, who is the one who usually starts the fight? Not in terms of what is said, in terms of the first person who makes it physical. First person who hits or slaps. And there's a long, I was on the phone, long silence. And he goes, me. I said, bro, therapist, now. you got to talk to somebody. This is fucked up. you got something going on in your head that I can't, this is too deep for you to fix. I'll help you with the other relationship management stuff, but I can't. If you're on a regular, if you're really hitting your girlfriend, and well, I don't care what she says. Well, she says it. Well, then break up with her. I would I would dump pink firefly in ten seconds. She gave me shit all the time. Would put up with that. Why are you? So, that's that's my thought. What changes do you have for founder sanctum? None. Founder sanctum's working great. We have uh, things peripheral to founder sanctum. Founder Sanctum, we would just listen to you. That's a, that's a very customizable program in terms of what you guys recommend. So you guys say, hey, this would be great if you could do this. I'm wide open because it's a very free-flowing program. But no, Founder Sanctum, we like it. I was thinking of operating a business in a dating niche. What type of industry is dating in your opinion? Stagnating or solid? Uh, neither. It's neither, but it's not stagnating. Pe guys will always want to get laid. So you're covered there. There's just lots of dating niches, right? Is Craigslist game a big thing now? No, they banned it. So you see what I'm saying? Depends on the dating niche you're talking about. How much time do I need to spend in Dubai to have a business there? To maintain it? Once every, you need to come, come to two weeks. If you want to do our service, two weeks in November. And then you've got it. To maintain it, you need to visit Dubai twice a year. And when I say visit, you land, you walk out of the airport, you wave at the ocean, you get back on the plane, you fly home. That's all you got to do. You don't have to spend any time. You have to visit. And my understanding is there are ways around that, but they get complicated, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, in terms of being physically present. Do you have an executive assistant or personal assistant or both specifically as the CEO or both specifically as the CEO of DCS International. You know what? At the moment, I do not. I all those functions are divvied out among several different people. Um, every time I start thinking about getting a personal assistant, I'm like, well, I already have this person doing that, and that person doing this, and this person doing that. I have someone called an implementer who is, but that's not a personal assistant. So the answer is no. Now, if you ask this question a year from now, next year. I may have one by then, but maybe not. So I just don't, I don't know. And I don't know why that occurred with me. It just, that's just not how it evolved. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, without pink firefly is going to be in the United States next few months. So I'll be alone here in Dubai. And I'm like, you know, I need an assistant here. Not, I don't have, that's not where I want to put my money right now, but at some point. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but then pink firefly will come back and you know, show me up. What do you think is the purpose of marriage other than as a container for kids? There is no purpose for legal marriage in the modern era. There is none. Long-term pair bonding, yes. Legal marriage, no, it's useless. Why is it a good idea to keep the exact to keep exact income a secret? You seem not to care about hiding rough estimates, but why do you never you never reveal exact numbers? Why is that? I've talked, you should go to my blog. Uh go Google um, let's see, is it which blog is it at? calebjones.com. It's calebjones.com or alphamail20.com. Why I don't talk about specific numbers. I have to do a whole article on that. Legal reasons is the big one. Legal. There's lots of people listening online. There are people who could sue you. There are governments listening. I don't want to give everyone all this information. Um, legal is the big one. The second one, but it's a distant second, are nitpickers. You don't make that. Let me see a pro. Show me your tax return. I don't want to dick with that stuff. You just guess what I make. That's also why I don't talk about how many women I've had sex with. I don't, I'm never going to reveal that number because I would be, I'd have nitpickers and haters for the rest of my life because I've seen other guys reveal that number and they have nitpickers and haters the rest of their lives. It's stupid. Oh, yeah, right. You know. What sort of activities or tasks would be done by a business growth consultant for B2B clients? Boy, very general question. So you'd have to look at profitability. You have to look at sales, top line sales. You look at expenses, all those things. How do we make more money in terms of getting more customers? How do we get repeat sales? 
How do we optimize amount per sale? How do we optimize in terms of operating costs at net profit? Those four levels. I'm an online teacher and so have my students. I got years ago are half the price compared to newer students. Huh? I don't get it. Some of my students I got years ago are half the price. Why are your students costing you money? I understand. I struggle. I struggle dropping them, but by keeping them, I miss on my hourly rate. Should I drop them? I don't understand your question. If you could rewrite that, it'd be great. I don't, I really don't understand. I want to, I want to give you the wrong information. Do you need to publish a number of free stuff, videos on YouTube before selling a course, or can you start selling that kind of immediately? You can sell it immediately, but you still want to have free stuff eventually. You can sell it right now, sure. But it, you, it always helps your branding and trust to have free stuff because we live in a culture right now where skepticism is sky high. I was just talking to John Somnes about this, Bulldog Mindset. We live in an era where everyone's skeptical. So if you've got nothing on the internet except for one paid sale in a course, that's tough. A lot of people are going to say, who the fuck is this guy? But if you've got 100 YouTube videos and it's really you, oh, okay, he's a real person and, oh, he seems to know what he's talking about. And, okay, I trust him. It's so why I do YouTube videos. Why do I think I do YouTube videos? Because I have all this free time on my hands? No. I want to build branding and trust. So when I talk about sovereign CEO, five flags, business, alpha 2.0 dating, I've got hundreds of videos and it's really me. Now I'm talking extemporaneously. You know it's me. And people go, oh, okay, yeah, this guy's for real. Cool. Can I set up a Dubai Corp first and set and decide what industry it serves afterwards? Yes. You can set up a Dubai Corporation and do nothing with it. You can just pick some random name and do nothing with it. You don't have to have a separate check account if you don't want to. A lot of people come to Dubai and they set up a corporation. They just let it sit there. They don't do anything with it. They don't have a corporate, they don't have a check account. They have no money in it. They just want the residency. It's fine. Oh, yeah. The answer is yes. Correcto. I have a high income as a location independent tech consultant with one client, de facto employee. Yeah, that's really not, I don't consider you a consultant. I consider you a contractor. What are some good ways to develop new income streams with limited time spent per week? Uh, no, you, you, nothing is limited time spent per week. How do I make a lot of money and don't spend a lot of time? You're going to have to spend time getting new clients. So that means you have to develop a brand and you start contacting people, either on the phone or over LinkedIn or both. And that's going to take you time. But the good news, if you're a consultant, here's the great news for you guys with the balls to be a consultant. Instead of saying, I don't know anything. No one will overpay me to be a consultant. I'm an idiot. That's not true. But those of you who are willing to be a consultant, the beauty of being a consultant, you only need two clients. Maybe three to make shitloads of money. It's fantastic. So those three models, consulting, coaching, service, consulting gets you the big money the fastest. There is a reason I went from literally zero in my early 20s, no college degree, no high school diploma, no people skills, some tech skills. From zero and within two and a half years, making a six-figure income in 1990s dollars as a consultant. Because you don't need a lot of business. You don't have to get 100 customers or 500 customers. Two, three, four, five, and you're making big money. And you're not working that hard. You're working. You're working. You're putting a full week. You're not blowing your brains out. I did eventually start blowing my brains out because I was stupid. Will there be another Dubai master residency with Mastermind next year? Probably. Probably. Are you ready to beg for Peter Zihan's forgiveness when China collapses? Peter Zihan said China says China will collapse in seven years. Yes, if China collapses in seven years, it won't. I will admit I'm wrong. There have been some predictions, not very many, where I was wrong, and I admitted I was wrong. I admitted I was wrong. I'm not like other people who hide. When, they're, when their predictions become untrue, they go hide, and they don't talk about it anymore. No, I publicly say I'm wrong. It won't. Peter Zihan said China would collapse in 2020, in 2010. That's what he said. Oops, did it collapse? Oops, no. Okay, He's been saying that forever. There are two different cutoff dates for Dubai GR. There are. Where are there two different cutoff dates? That There should be one. Show me where they are and I'll fix it. That's an error then. Or you're misreading it. Let's see. 
Dubai versus Singapore in terms of residency requirements. Dubai kicks Singapore's ass in terms of residency requirements. The four countries we talk about are the easiest countries in the world by far. Dubai, Armenia, Mexico, Paraguay. Those are the four easiest, fastest residencies in the world. No country in the world is better than those four countries. Those are the best. That's why I did them, and that's why I teach you how to do them. If there was someone, if there was a country better than those four, like if Singapore was better or as good, that would be one on the list. It's not. Singapore's not bad. But it's Dubai is really easy. My God. It's in and out. You got your res. You within two weeks, you you leave, unlike most countries, even though other ones on this list, you leave with your residency card. You walk away with it. In two weeks. That ain't Singapore. That ain't anybody. What peripheral topics should you help with the Paraguay get residency program, real estate investing, business, incorporating banking, legal, et cetera? Can we get can we follow up with your team after getting PR? Yes, and those are all things we talk about. We address now. We've enhanced that program because we had some problems last time. So we've enhanced that. So all that we do all that stuff. Yes. All that stuff. Let me see. Real estate, investing, business, incorporating, banking, legal. Yes, all that. At least we refer you to those things. Yeah. Oh yeah. Our legal team down in Paraguay is fucking fantastic. It's probably, no, it's not our best legal team because our, it ties, our, our legal team in Armenia is also really goddamn good. So they're really good in Paraguay. Our team. They're not the cheapest, but they're awesome. They kick ass. They're just great. They're good friends of mine. Marriage is a psychological relationship. Read, read Jung, Carl Jung on that. You're talking about long-term pair bonding when you live with a woman. That's great. Marriage is a legal contract, a three-way legal contract between you, your wife, and the state. Stupid. Don't do that. It was ridiculous. My current idea is helping men with Asperger's get laid, boost their SMV. I've got a few clients. I'm going to ask you myself. It's going okay, but growth can be an issue. Growth is always an issue. Work harder. And you want men with Asperger's who have money. So a lot of men with Asperger's don't have any money. You want men who are able to do this. Okay? But yeah, it's fine. Alpha 2, but a question. Vasectomy before an OLTR or marriage, when is best for disclosure? After the lock-in or talk of the OLTR talk? It's up to you, but the OLTR talk is the latest you would bring it up. You would not bring it up after that. That's the latest you'd bring it up. So at any time before that is fine. But if she gets all the way to the OLTR talk, you have to have that talk. Because that's what the OLTR talk is. The negatives of her being with you versus other men. Here are the bad things about being with me. If you live with me for the next 25 years of your life or more, here are the negatives. I can't have children. We can adopt, but I ain't having any kids. Get married. So just tell that. Are you in a mastermind or two at the moment? I am. I'm not going to talk about it, but I am. I mean, I have a math teaching company for several years. My hourly rate was much less than a few years ago. Oh, why? Why did you reduce your hourly rate? New students I get pay me double the hourly rate as compared to old students. Should I drop them? Oh, you're raising your rate. Here's what you tell your old students. Hey, I have to raise my rates. I'm sorry I have to. However, I'm going to give you a grand grandfather period of blank. It could be two months Three months, four months, I would say maybe three months. So three months, I want the, the old rate in three months on this date, November, blah, 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 blah. I have to raise my rate to this. I'm sorry, but I'll give you three months. That's what you got to do. And yes, you will lose some, and that's good because the slots you lose, you replace the higher paying students. That's how you do it. That's exactly, and I've done this many times. How do you overcome some skepticism and stranger danger? For closing consulting clients without organic or a massive brand. Without organic or a massive brand. Uh, on the phone. Your phone your phone sales has to be on point. You gotta be, you gotta be very authentic. And give them a lot of free stuff during the process. Write an ebook, 25 pages, you know, right? And that's good. And give it to them. Establish as much credibility as you can. I heard the Philippines good to outsource. Do you have experience hiring Filipinos? I sure do. They're fantastic. Great for um, outbound sales. Fantastic for that. Philippines is great. Yeah. Uh, some of you are asking questions that are attached to other things. 
Dubai GR 10th and 15th of October. Give me the link of where you're seeing both. Are, that, are those on the same page or are those on different pages? Be specific and I'll fix it. I think it's the 15th. Well, wait a minute now. There's two Dubai events. Oh, wait. No, there are, but that wouldn't be. Well, maybe there's a Dubai Super Conference and there's a Dubai Get Residency. There are two different events. I don't know if you're mixing those up. To be a B2B consultant, uh, do you always need prior experience, work with experienced freelancers, or can you start quickly in a new niche? Of course you can start quickly. You don't need, you don't need prior experience. Prior experience, work with experienced freelancers. Or can you start, oh, I see what you're asking. You need experience or you got to hire a subcontractor. Sorry. Why would I hire you as a consultant if you have literally no experience doing it and you're not going to bring on anyone's any experience? Now, if you have peripheral experience, you have experience that in your jobs where it's very similar, that's okay. But if it's something brand new you've never done, why the fuck would I hire you? You got to either do it yourself or hire an outsource person. Yeah. The only reason for years that I even knew about Paraguay was that my country played them in the World Cup. Never in a million years would I have seen a real possibility of moving there. Yeah, most Americans, you say Paraguay, they say, what's that? Yeah, Americans are smart. Any thoughts on Mauritius as a living flag? Mauritius is fantastic. I am. That is on my agenda to do a lot of research on Mauritius. Mauritius is great. Now, it skews a little higher in terms of higher income guys, kind of like Dubai. If you're a really poor young guy, you're not going to go to Mauritius. But, dude, it's it's the shit. I have some buddies here in Dubai who fucking love it. And, I and oh, so, yeah, I think it's fantastic. I have a Bruce Lee mindset of talking about what is good, discarding what is bad, and adding what is your own, and adding what is your own in, re, in relation to black pill, red pill, and blue pill. What do you think of this? What aspect of black pill is good? What aspect of blue pill is good? There are some aspects of black a red pill that suck. So, no, I don't agree with that. What is the minimum online presence needed to close consulting clients, especially since I want to offer at 5K PM per month retainers? What is the minimum online presence to be closing as much as you're able to do? Look at all the fucking YouTube videos that I do in one week across both my channels. As much as you can do. There's no, there's no statistical minimum. Now, in terms of um, certain uh, social media platforms, there are minimums. So YouTube should be at least once a week, but that's bullshit. You can do more than one a week, more than one. If you're going to do one YouTube video a week, it better be like a 45 minutes long and better be really amazingly produced and all that crap. That's my point. So as much as you can, man. Got a Dutch plus Russian passport and an Armenian residency. That's cool. Is that enough? Which should be my next move? Uh, is that enough? That's up to you. I think it would probably be enough. Dutch plus Russian and Armenian residency. I mean, I don't know what your objectives are. I get these questions all the time. What are your objectives? What are your five flags objectives? I don't know. It might be enough. Might not. Sounds like it's a lot. Dutch and um, Russian. I mean, Russian's not a bad passport. Dutch passports, you, you know, EU. Mm, don't love that. But that's, I don't know. It depends on what your objectives are. So let's do uh, one or two more questions, and I will uh, take off. Founder Sanctum, eight coaching sessions per month for two ninety seven. dollars If you have any, if you need any help in the business or financial part of your life at all, you are dumb to not sign up for this. I mean that. That's how cheap it is. This is one of those programs I made ridiculously cheap to make you silly if you don't sign up for it. Eight. Eight. There have been months, I'll be honest with you, there have been months we have lost money on this program. Because we're, we're having, you know, eight different coaches, not eight different coaches, but eight different coaching sessions where we pay a really good high quality coach. And you're only paying, you know, $297 a month. Dude. Dude. Come on. I mean, right? So you got two more days for this. Friday night, we close this. Cool. Um, Dan, you keep asking on systemic coaching. I answered that already. Uh, let's see. Ooh, a bunch of questions came out. I don't see. 
Would you set up a Dubai Corp first and then go to Paraguay residency or go all out on Paraguay, set up entities there and skip Dubai Corporation? Outcome seems the same on foreign income, foreign income taxation. If you're an American, it's not relevant. So you're right. America doesn't, as long as you're out of the country, that's all they care about. So if you're an American, that's not relevant. Um, you will not pay taxes in a Dubai corporation at all. You will not pay taxes in a Paraguay corporation if 100% of the income of that corporation is outside of Paraguay. You got to be careful about that. One. If that's the case, you will not pay taxes there. So it really is up to you in terms of what your objectives are. I would trust a Dubai corporation over a Paraguay corporation because Dubai is a 10 times more solid country. But I would not trust a Paraguay corporation. I have, I'm going to have assets down there. Or maybe I do. Wink, wink. So sure. It, it depends, again, on your preference and what your objectives are. If you want 100% safety, Dubai is a safer bet than Paraguay because it's just Paraguay's, you know, South America. And, you know, but you can certainly get a Paraguay corporation. It's awesome. It's up to you. What time's the coaching sketch and schedule for? Uh, uh, let's see. Saturdays. I want to say Saturdays. Sometimes Sundays, sometimes Wednesdays. I think that's correct. But times, times that are compatible for Europe and South or North America. The only time I have a problem is, is if you're in Australia. You might have trouble. But you get recordings all the sessions. I'm a medical doctor. Can I work for me? Can you work for you? Can you work for me? I know a lot about longevity and biohacking stuff. You can use me for events programs. I have no idea who you are, so no. Yes, Dan, I answered it. Watch the replay. I, I answered it. It took me a long time to answer it. All right, let's do one more question. I got a vominos. Unless you guys are done. I'll give you a few seconds because sometimes there's a delay when you type it when I see it. Founder Sanctum. All right, last question. Best way to manage sleep when running a location in business from Southeast Asia with clients in North America. Here's what I do. This is what I do. Great question to end on. In Dubai, I'm giving you my Dubai example. I know Southeast Asia different time zone. This is my example. In Dubai, I stay up very late and I sleep in. So I stay up to like 1 a.m. in the morning when I'm here in Dubai and I sleep into like 10 or whatever it is. I get eight and a half hours of sleep. Okay. And so that way, I have enough overlap with the North American time zones where I'm okay. And if I sleep in, everyone's asleep and no one cares. Or everyone's going to bed when I wake up. So it's not a big deal. It's nighttime. So that's what I do. Now, when I go to, when I was in Mexico for six weeks, it was the inverse. I would get up at like 5.30 in the morning, 5.30 a.m. Mexico time and go to bed really early because I want to be in those time zones. So you just do your best. Whatever you can do to skew that time where if you sleep in, Maybe you get up really early. Maybe you get up at 3 a.m. That's your day. You wake up at 3 a.m. every morning. Okay, whatever whatever time it takes, 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and you go to bed early. Okay, You do a Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg wakes up at 3.30 a.m., goes to bed at 7. I think it's silly, but that's what he does. So you just that's how you do it. You adjust. All right, guys. Founder Sanctum, if you have any interest, I will see you, uh, I will see you very soon. I have a lot of stuff going on the next few weeks with you guys, so I'll see you very soon. All right. Bye.